Hi friends, welcome to today's video. Today we are going to study about event loops in Node.js. So if you are new here, do subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button so that you will get the latest videos delivered first to you. So let's start today's class. So in the last video, we studied about Node.js that what is a Node.js and various things that makes the Node.js so powerful. Now, one of the reason is your event loop. Okay. So, event loop is a design that makes your execution so fast. Let us try to understand it. Okay. I will give you a simplified model of the actual event loop implementation in Node.js so that you understand the concepts. So, first thing we need to understand that what is blocking and what is non-blocking. So, what do I mean by that? Your Node.js is a single threaded system. Okay, There is only one thread in the system. So, one thread can do only one thing at a time. Okay. So, if it is able to do one thing at a time, then you can think that if you have like 1000 concurrent users or 100 concurrent users, then each user will have to wait when either the first user, the earlier user has been served. Okay then the wait time will be huge. So, a single thread system designed in that fashion where one thing is only being served once the first come first serve then it will not work. Okay. So, what is blocking and non blocking this concept will help to understand that how we can optimize a single threaded system. Suppose there is a thread okay, and we give it a task 1. Okay. After completing the task 1, it wants to do the task 2 and then task 3. Now suppose task 1 is suppose your file access, okay. you want to read a file and task 2 is to make a network request to some other service or some other server. So when file is being read, you cannot do a network call. Okay. So, this file reading is blocking the network call. So, this read of the file by that thread is blocking. So, this is called blocking. And what is non blocking that I can read the file, but at the same time I am also free to make a network call. So, this is called non blocking design. So, if we have to convert this single thread so that it makes non blocking calls we need to change the structure in which we do the, our task. So again we have task 1, task 2 and other tasks. What we can do? We have got a single thread. Okay? So we are limited of doing one thing at a time. But we are using this single thread not to complete the task but to achieve that task. What is the difference? Now most of the kernels that is operating system on which we work whether it is Linux, Mac OS or Windows, the operating system has got async handlers. That is we can ask them to read a file, it will give us the content of the file for example. Or if we want to make a network call, we can ask the operating system. So OS provides a lot of async methods. Now if I have to do both things. I have got a single thread, I can ask the operating system. Operating system has got multiple threads depending on the handling that OS can make, it can create number of threads. So it can access the file, OS will help us access the file, Okay, for example, in its different thread and it will help to make a network call in its different thread and after the, the thing that we want the OS to do it will provide a callback. Okay? So, we will see what callback is. So, now we can say OS that do this task and do other task and then provide me a callback. So, now this thread becomes free 
this single thread can is now only doing one thing that is providing the task to the, the system which can execute it independently okay so now this design becomes very efficient where you are utilizing the systems os to actually do this task okay now you can ask suppose there is a task 3 and this is a cpu intensive calculation for example and it takes a long time to complete so we cannot provide this task to the os because os do not have any handling of this operation so actually what we have in the node is the thread pool okay thread pool when you create by default has got four threads so the things which os cannot handle only those things are then provided to be done by the thread pool so this thread that is was blocked now it says that do task 3 in a thread pool okay and thread pool will do the task just like os was doing and provide a callback now all these operations 1 2 and 3 can take place independently because there are other threads provided by the either the thread pool or the os okay so when we are not sure that either one will complete first or two or three so we will wait for the callback so this is called asynchronous processing of your program okay so this callback is very important because this is providing you the information that a task has been completed so the convention that node.js follow for the callback is whenever you are providing a callback it should be the last parameter of any function callback should be passed as a last parameter of the function this is the convention that node.js follows now we can call the callback as the last line of the function execution okay and in the callback callback is a function javascript function it first parameter is the error okay if, if there is no error we'll pass null into it so this is the convention for callback so now we understood that a single thread was being blocked by operations by design we overloaded the task we provided the task to the os or the thread pool and then we get a callback so that your thread your main thread you can call is free to enqueue the task and it gets the callback when the task is completed in different thread okay so now this process makes your node.js very efficient and the design how this will happen is actually your event loop event loop is designed such that this operation is very efficient okay now node.js uh, provide the event loop one of the thing uh, that event loop has is called phases so phase defined this is just a few phases i have taken for reference okay there are other phases also so event loop provide phases okay for example one phase is called timers okay second phase the some other phase we have poll okay so these phases has got callback queue associated with them okay suppose you call set timer or set interval a callback will be enqueued here and this will be in the timers phase if you have to do some io operation a callback will be uh, will be enqueued here okay so event loop gets into one phase at a time okay this thread gets into one phase at a time okay it traverses the queue and executes the callback either when all the callbacks had been executed or there is a limit that we want we can specify that this much amount of work for one phase has been done you move to the next phase similarly it will go into the next phase after one first phase go into the other phase and then in, then execute the callbacks in the queue okay the kernel will take the event and then provide a callback which will be enqueued 
okay. So, your event loop is making this asynchronous operation really fast by dividing things into phases and callbacks it maintains to be executed in each phase. It is over it is providing the task handling the task IO task or computer computational task to OS or using your thread pool ok. So, this is what is event loop in your node.js ok. So, event loop is actually what makes the node.js runs really very fast and efficient and utilizes the system OS for example and the threads that OS can create and also the thread pool. You can also change the thread pool default number of threads that are there in the thread pool ok. So, I hope you must have understood the what is the event loop and how this blocking and non blocking terminology actually means and how the asynchronous operations are being performed by the node.js ok. So, I will meet you in the next video and there we will understand more things about node.js. So, take care.